Good morning everyone. This morning as I welcome you to the worship service I would like to share about jobs assignments and breaks. Everyone is engaged in some kind of a job or assignment. You go to office, you run a business, you do your study, you do ministry, you do household work and then you take a break. But there is a job that God has created in which there are no breaks. Your involvement in that job could be active or passive, but there is just no break. You must be wondering, which job am I talking about? Let me not keep you guessing. It is a job of a mother. Motherhood is a job in which there is no break. Raising children, meeting their needs, helping them with their studies, taking them around. Mother is involved in every sphere of children's lives. Even when they are grown up, she is still involved in their lives, thinking about them, helping wherever she can and meeting their needs. I would like to share examples of few mothers around us who don't take a break. Nirja, raising a 3-year-old and a 1-year-old, doesn't take a break. Sweetie, mothering one young adult and two teens as no break. Cheryl, a mother to a 35-year-old and 30-year-old as no break from motherhood. So is Brenda, my friend who was speaking before me. Uh, she's a mother of two, one 32-year-old and another 26-year-old. She doesn't take any breaks and Brothers, please don't be disheartened that we are not talking about you this morning. I want you to know that all of you are awesome, but today is a very special day and we want to tell all the mummies out there that they are very, very special. Even the Bible talks a lot about them. In the book of Proverbs chapter 31, in verse 21 it's written, your strength comes from God. In verse 28 it's written that your children are blessed to have you. And in verse 31, it's written that we need to honor you for everything that you do. So on that happy note, a very happy Mother's Day to all of you. At this time, let's bow down our heads and pray and submit the service ahead into our Father's mighty hands. Uh, good morning, Father. Thank you so much for today's day and this special occasion of Mother's Day. Please be with all the women all the mothers and bless all of them and be with each one of them in a very special way. Father, I want to thank you for bringing all of us together through this virtual platform and I pray that as the service is going ahead, be with everyone who is partaking in it, that they are able to attend it without any glitch. At this time, I want to make a special prayer for all those people who have not been reached out to by anyone. God, we may miss reaching out to people, governments may miss reaching out to people, but you don't miss anyone because the scripture says that every name is written in your book. So please strengthen people, give them solace and let your peace come upon everyone. As we continue with this worship service, be with the communion, be with the message and be with each one of us that we could take everything that has been taught to our hearts and we could change and change for better and change for you. Thank you so much yet again for Jesus, even though we don't deserve him. And I pray all this in his mighty name. Amen.
I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. So here I am. morning brothers sisters and friends this is one of the most crucial parts in our worship where we remember the cross and take part in the bread and the wine which represents the body and the blood of Christ Jesus this morning let us turn our bibles to genesis chapter 22 verse 7 and 8 and it says isaac spoke up and said to his father abraham father yes my son abraham replied The fire and wood are here Isaac said but where is the lamb for the burnt offering Abraham answered God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering my son and the two of them went on together When I look at this passage I am amazed to see Abraham's response God gave him a son when he was very old at the age of 100 and asked him to sacrifice the same son at such a young age Abraham would have thought what kind of a god would do such a thing but he doesn't question god instead he decides to obey in verse 8 when he was answering his son Isaac when Isaac asked him about the lamb 
I'm sure Abraham would have been torn apart to look at his young innocent boy on his face and tell him that we've come here to sacrifice you. His only son, the one he loved, the one he adored and cared for, the one he would have given up anything for. He was going to be sacrificed on the mountain. Today, we know that this powerful Old Testament story is also a foreshadowing of the greatest sacrifice ever made. The once for all sacrifice made on Mount Calvary when God our heavenly father chose not to spare even his only son but decided to give him up for us. What a shattering picture of God's only begotten son who like Isaac was also to be led up that same hill bound and nailed to a cross as the only perfect yet willing sacrifice acceptable to a holy and righteous God. 2000 years after Abraham there was no substitute ram caught in a thicket to save his son this time god himself provided the lamb to christ to bear the sins of the entire world today the cross has changed everything for us we have no longer to live as though we are bound in darkness and in no hope through jesus through his death on the cross and the nails that went through him we are overcomers and victorious We are no longer slaves to sin but are called children of the living God. This morning if you're listening to this after having a rough messed up week, I want to give you a hope. This is the time to start afresh because Christ has already paid the price for you on that cross. This is the time to keep all our guilt away because Jesus has redeemed us with his blood, with the nails and all that pain he endured on the cross. So as we take part in the bread and the wine let us remember this intense pain and suffering that Jesus had to go through to save us remember that he loves us and wants us to enjoy eternity to him let's bow down our heads and pray dear god my heavenly father it's such a joy to know your son jesus and all the pain and the suffering he went through for us we are awestruck to see your ultimate sacrifice at the calvary for such lost unworthy people like us Today as we take part in this communion help us to remember the pain the suffering the love the grace you poured out for us help us to remember that you've already paid the price for our sins on that cross and you continue to strengthen us to live the right way in Jesus name i pray amen हाय मॉम सच में आप बहुत बढ़िया हो और बहुत ब्यूटीफुल हो बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग हो गॉड के किंगडम में और मेरे लाइफ में मैं बहुत ग्रेटफुल हूँ कि गॉड ने मुझे ब्लेस किया कि मैं आपकी डॉटर बन पाऊँ सच में आप मेरी बहुत केयर करते हो मुझसे बहुत प्यार करते हो और आप मेरी हर एक विश पूरी करते हो और आप मुझे कभी अकेला नहीं रखते जब मैं बीमार पड़ता हूँ तो मम्मी आप मेरा केयर करते हो मम्मी और मम्मी आप दुनिया से सबसे अच्छी मम्मी है मैं आपसे बहुत प्यार करता हूँ थैंक यू मम्मी बहुत सारी कष्ट मेहनत और बहुत सारी दुख सहन हो गया ताकि हम खुश रह सकें मैं थैंक्स कहना चाहती हूँ बहुत सारी चीज़ों के लिए जैसे बहुत सारे संकट आए हमारे लाइफ में फिर भी आप अकेले कभी मतलब ऐसा नहीं सोचा कि नहीं मैं नहीं कर सकती आप कुछ और पर आपने हमें हमेशा संभाला और हमेशा अच्छी तरीके से बढ़ाया और गॉड के बारे में बातें बताई बहुत सारे कुछ हमको सिखाया ऐसे दिन आए मेरे लाइफ में की मैंने बहुत गंदे गंदे गलतियाँ किया बट आप मेरे साथ वहाँ पे खड़े थे जहाँ पे कोई मेरे साथ नहीं था सबको लगता था मैं गलत हूँ इसके लिए आप मेरे साथ थे आपने मुझे समझाया कि मुझे क्या करना चाहिए और क्या नहीं करना चाहिए और आपने हमेशा मुझे प्यार दिया और आपका सभी पापा नहीं है तो आप जो चाहिए हमें वो सब पूरा करते हो इसलिए मैं आपका बहुत शुक्रगुजार हूँ एंड थैंक यू एंड लव यू मम्मी मैं गाना गाऊंगी आपके लिए मैं कभी बदलाता नहीं पर से डरता हूँ मैं माँ 
यू तो मैं दिखलाता नहीं तेरे पर वाह करता हूँ मैं माँ तुझे सब है पता है ना माँ तुझे सब है पता Good morning brothers and sisters it's great to meet together online in this virtual meeting of ours i hope that you and your family are safe and you're doing well today is mothers day so happy mothers day to all you wonderful mothers and i hope you liked the surprise you know all over the world Right now there is fear and uncertainty at what the future holds. But be sure of this, God is in control and good is going to come out of this. Good will come because I believe that deep down within all of us there is a capacity to do good to others especially in times of difficulty. It's like the doctors and nurses and the medical staff who are our heroes battling the virus. And of course other medical professionals who are looking for a vaccine. and there's food and grains and other supplies been given to the poor by people and different organizations so yes a lot of good is happening for many of us i know that being stuck at home is not a pleasant thing i've heard some reports that some of you are getting impatient some of us are waking up at 10 in the morning and 11 in the morning and some are sleeping at 3 and 4 in the morning spending hours and hours on the phone <laughs> My advice is use this time to maybe learn how to cook a new dish or help your mom in the washing and drying of the clothes or filling water or, or cleaning the dishes maybe you are tempted to sleep more or be lazy or spend hours on your phone and so the question is how to tackle temptation that comes every single day how to overcome this and for that we need to look at how jesus handled temptation there is a great verse in hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 which reads for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet was without sin jesus knew about temptation every single temptation because he experienced it and so for us knowing that jesus was tempted in every way just as we are it gives us confidence that we can approach him for help why because he will know what to say he will know what to do he can guide us in any and every situation he can offer the way out because he was tempted in every way but he did not sin wow You know the Bible teaches us that God does not tempt us. It is Satan and our own evil desires within us that lead us astray. So how do we deal with this unseen enemy? How to tackle him? How to overcome him? How to win the battle? And we'll see three ways today how Satan tempts us in this world. He is called the prince of the world and how he wants to trap us. and we will see how we should respond let's look at 1 john chapter 2 verse 16 i'm reading from the nkjv version it says over here for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world let's understand what these three things mean okay point number 1 the lust of the flesh let's see first how satan tempted adam in the garden of eden and then how satan tempted jesus in the wilderness what tactics did satan use 
because he tempted both with a physical desire that was eating eating something that was attractive adam with fruit and jesus with bread let's see genesis chapter 3 verse 6 and 7 when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom she took some and ate it she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it when the eyes of both of them were opened when they realized that they were naked so they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves the fruit looked good it was pleasing it was attractive it promised wisdom and so eve ate it and then she gave some to adam who was with her the bible says adam could have stopped her but he did not he participated with her this is the first time that our parents our first parents sinned and disobeyed god with the lust of the flesh the desire to eat let's see luke chapter 4 now verses 1 to 4 jesus full of the holy spirit returned from the jordan and was led by the spirit in the desert where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil he ate nothing during those days and at the end of them he was hungry the devil said to him if you are the son of god tell this stone to become bread and jesus answered man does not live on bread alone he's quoting a passage from deuteronomy that says man does not live on bread alone but every word that comes from the mouth of god here jesus had not eaten for 40 days he's obviously very hungry but notice notice satan's first words he says if if you are the son of god then tell the stone to become bread satan uses small words little words to distort the truth he wants to plant a seed of doubt in your mind in genesis chapter 3 verse 1 his first words to eve were did did god really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden That's how it starts. That's his tactic. Small words, little distractions to pull you away. He will plant a doubt in your mind. Say if Are you sure? Do you really think that? Then he will appeal to the flesh to hunger. And how do they respond? Well, Adam ate the fruit because it looked good, but Jesus did not make the stone bread. Instead, he responded with scripture. Now besides food and drink the lust of the flesh also refers to sinful sensual pleasures. I mean what does your flesh want when it is hungry? It wants food. What does your flesh want when it's thirsty? It wants water. What does your flesh want when you have sexual and impure thoughts? It wants sex. Remember that the desire for sex is something that God has put in each and every one of us. But it is to be enjoyed only between a married couple. Okay, let me repeat that. The desire for sex to procreate to multiply is something that God has put in each one of us but it is to be enjoyed only between a married couple this is God's desire this is God's wish but some of us can't wait we want to give in to the desires of the flesh now without waiting for marriage this will hurt you and many others because it is not done God's way there will be pain sorrow tears grief because you did not do it god's way for just a few minutes of pleasure you will have scars in your life which is why today we have abortions and broken families and teenage pregnancies rape incest adultery why because people don't do it god's way and what sin will do is he will whisper a few little words in your head it's okay to chat with someone late at night It's okay to flirt. It's okay to put up some pictures of yourself and wait for comments. It starts that way. Before you know it, somebody likes you are meeting this person, you're talking, you're opening yourself for going deeper into sin. It starts very innocently. What did Jesus do though? How did he tackle this temptation for this physical sensual desire? He quoted Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3. Man shall not live by bread alone but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus chose something 
that would satisfy him eternally, not temporarily. Because God's word is eternal. Adam chose something that satisfied him temporarily, just for a few minutes, and he lost paradise. Psalm 119 verse 9, one of my favorite verses says, How can a young man keep his way pure? By living according to your word. 2 Timothy 2.22, Paul tells Timothy, Flee also youthful lusts. In another version, flee from sexual immorality. So brothers and sisters, how is your purity during this time? Are you being tempted? I'm sure you are. But are you winning the battle like Jesus by quoting God's word, which is the sword of the Lord? Or are you like Adam, who is giving, giving into the lust of the flesh by eating the fruit? Remember, just a few minutes of premarital sex can ruin your life and leave you and your close ones with scars. Decide today to live God's way. Fight the evil one with scripture next time he tempts you. That's how Jesus did it, with the word. Have scriptures memorized and when you attack Satan with the word, he will leave you. That's how you tackle the lust of the flesh. Point number two, the lust of the eyes. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 4, we see how in the Garden of Eden, Satan said, eat the fruit and you will become like God. And Luke chapter 4, verse 5 to 8, let's read what Satan tempts Jesus with. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me and I can give it to anyone I want to. So if you worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. In the desert, Jesus was offered power, power over all the kingdoms of the world. Satan took him to a high point and offered him all the kingdoms. Jesus, you can have all this. Just worship me, that's all. What did Adam do? Adam took the bait and lost everything good he had with God. What did Jesus do? Jesus told Satan, get behind me. He saw through Satan's plan and rejected it. The Bible teaches us that Satan has been cast down upon this world. His time is short and he wants to take many people with him. So he will entice you, he will tempt you, he will trick you, he will lure you. How? With your eyes. He will show you things and he will whisper, I can give this to you. See how nice it is. You really need this. He will tempt you with the lust of the eyes. He will make you want things. He will make you covet things with great desire. Now imagine seeing all the nations and being told you can have all these. They are yours. What a powerful temptation to be ruler over all nations. Anything you want is yours. It's the lust of the eyes. Power and pleasure. What a combination. Our eyes want the latest phone. Our eyes want a bigger house. Our eyes want a new car. Our eyes want a beautiful model as a wife. Our eyes want a Shah Rukh Khan as a husband. Our eyes want different things and different people. Satan is so bold, he told Jesus, Jesus, I will give you all this, just bow down and worship me. And when Satan gets you to run after material things with the lust of your eyes, you get trapped and the race doesn't stop. You will always want more. You will never be satisfied. You know, I got caught in this trap. I was 24 years old. I'd finished my degree and I wanted to become a millionaire. I wanted lots of money. I wanted a good job. I wanted a nice big house with a swimming pool. I had the lust in my eyes. And so I went to America. I had a plan. I got my degree. I got job offers. And I said, now I'm on my way. I'm going to be rich, successful, and famous. But God had another plan for me. God sent someone into my life when I was 25 years old. His name was Joseph Lippo, and he studied the Bible with me. And I decided to follow Jesus. 
I gave it all up. But today, after 34 years in the faith, I still get tempted to want more. To have the latest car, to have a fancy house, to have a great job where I'm the boss. But when I get tempted, I remember what Jesus said. In Luke 11, he says, Life does not consist in the abundance of your possessions. In 1 Timothy 6, I remember he says, The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. In Acts 20, verse 35, I remember he says, It is more blessed to give than to receive. A great passage about the eyes is in Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 and 23. Please turn there because I believe if you follow this, you will be able to overcome the lust of the eyes. It says here, Matthew 6, verse 22 and 23. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Wow! The eye is the lamp to my body. The eye is a window to my soul. I must be careful what I allow my eyes to see. On my phone every day I get ads of women who want to talk to me. I download this app for some good chat with some women. I get photos of women who are not dressed properly. I have a choice. Do I want light to come into my body through my eyes? Or do I want darkness? And every day this happens. What about you? On your phone? On your computer? Do you watch porn? Do you watch dirty pictures? Do you like violence and sex and killing and abuse? If so, then you are allowing darkness inside your body. Jesus says your whole body will be full of darkness if your eyes are bad. But you can win this battle by saying this verse, My eye is the lamp of the body and I will not allow darkness to come inside. That's what I do. I do not allow darkness to come into my body. I will not look at those pictures. I will not click on that lamp. I will instead use my phone to see good things and see good messages and hear good sermons and see funny things but I will not allow other things to come into my body. Make a decision today. When you see something that you desire, when there is lust in your eyes, say, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. I will not be deceived. The Lord is my God. I will worship Him and follow Him only. And you watch how He will flee from you. That's how you tackle the lust of the eyes, just as Jesus did. And lastly, the pride of life, the boasting of what we have and what we have done. In Genesis 3, Satan told Adam that he could be like God. Can you imagine that? You can be like the most powerful being. And Satan is appealing to Adam's pride, to Adam's ego. And what does he do in Luke chapter 4 with Jesus? Let's read verses 9 to 12. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, notice the if again, if you are, throw yourself down from there, from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered, it says, do not put the Lord, your God, to the test. So when Jesus was told, throw yourself down from the temple, God will save you, Jesus quoted scripture. He told Satan, it is written, do not put God to the test. What does he mean by that? It is, you know, pride to try and bring God down to our level to try and test him, to think that he's equal to us, to question him and think that we have a better plan than him. Jesus was not willing to test God, even though the devil quoted scripture to him. We also have to watch for the pride in our life. For example, we can think, Oh, I am older than you. I know much more than you. Really? Just because you are older does not mean you are wiser than everybody else. You can learn from the youngest of disciples. Jesus tells his apostles that they should learn from little children. Many of us can also learn from younger disciples. You know, I appreciate Joe Tom's 
who is in our Bible talk. He plays the keyboard for the church. Right now he's in coaching, busy studying for his exams. But he's also busy teaching the teens and campus online. He's also in touch with the singles here in Bombay. He's in touch with us in our Bible talk group. A couple of weeks back, he did a devotional for us. It was fantastic. He was sharing thoughts from a book that he was reading called The Purpose Driven Life. Many of us are older than him. There's Brenda, there's Sonana, there's Cheryl, there's Buddy, and there's me. But we can all learn from someone younger. So brothers and sisters, please don't let the pride of being older than someone affect you. We can learn from younger people. Next, we take pride in the fact that we belong to a certain family. My family is better than your family. Or I am from an upper caste, you are from a lower caste. Or I am from this city, or from this village. Or I am from the north and you are from the south. That's pride, thinking that we are better than somebody else just because of our location or our background. The Bible tells us that we should consider others better than ourselves. Next, our pride can make us stumble because we take great pride in our past accomplishments. We say, oh, 20 years ago, this is what I did. Or 10 years ago, this is what I did. Do you want to know what I did that time? You know, nobody wants to know what he did 20 years ago. The question is, what did you do yesterday? What did you do today? That is the question. But we take pride in our past accomplishments. Money, position, power, all these can make us prideful and make us look down on others. Just remember that whatever you have, it is because God has graciously given it to you. And he wants you to use it for his glory, not yours. It is not good to boast of what you have or what you have done. Boasting is prideful. You can lose everything tomorrow. Then what will you do? That's what coronavirus has done. All the boasting of the world has been given a solid punch. The whole world is gasping. People who are taking pride in their plans, their future, all that is gone. So if you understand, it's not what you've done in the past, it is what are you doing right now what are you giving right now that determines your future blessings? God will reward you not on what you plan to do or what you plan to give, but what you are doing right now. By the way, I do hope that brothers and sisters, you are giving a monthly contribution because the church needs it. We need to understand that time is short and Satan is going to try and take us with him. And especially during this lockdown, he will tempt us at home. It will start small. He will put a small doubt in your mind. He will put a small distraction in your life. You will tell a little lie. You will steal a little money. You will be a little lazy. And then very soon you are trapped because you did not attack him with God's word, which is the sword of the Lord. You know, many times we thought, oh, what shall we do? This is lockdown. How can we meet? But praise God, he's given us a solution. We're able to have online messages and God's word is still spreading. We did three messages on Job. We did three messages on the people Jesus impacted. The first lesson was on, on how disaster strikes. And what do we do when disaster strikes? Almost eight weeks we've been doing messages now on online, which is helpful for the entire church. We will not let Satan try and destroy us and make us think we cannot meet. We will meet. We will sing. We will worship God. We will praise Jesus because he is the God of the universe and he loves us. So let's be aware today of the three ways that you can be tempted. Three ways you will be attacked. One, the lust of the flesh. Satan will appeal to your physical sensual desires. Next, the lust of the eyes. He'll make you see things and want them. And third, the pride of life. 
the boasting of what you have and what you have done. But what is the solution? Do what Jesus did. Learn from him. What did Jesus do when he was tempted? He attacked with the word. And Satan left him. So you also attack with the word. Have scriptures ready. Quote them. And you will be victorious. Amen. And let's have a great week ahead. It is true that during this time of lockdown, temptations have greatly increased. There are times when I find myself just frustrated on my family. There are times when I find myself fighting the urge to not to go to a bad side and uh, fall into sin. Oh, how easy it is for us to go back to our former selves while we are housebound. But today's message was a reminder that it is in such times when I need to remind myself of God's word, his promises and his truths, and then preach those truths to myself, to the deepest parts of my being. I'm not called to be a victim to the devil's schemes, which is so easy to do, but I'm called to be victorious over the evil one by the power of the Holy Spirit. I am sure that you all are greatly spurred by today's message and I would like to encourage you to call up a brother or a sister, talk to them and share with them what you learned today. And don't forget, do something special for your mom, not just today, but every day. Before we end the podcast, we will be having a final song and I will be seeing you next Sunday. I've heard that there's a new series that we are starting. Don't tell anyone. Until next time, goodbye and God bless. Soon and very soon, we're going to see the King.